In this video, we're going to run through the XML sitemaps functionality in the all-in-one SEO pack. Here you can see that we're logged into the WordPress dashboard and we've navigated into the feature manager area of the all-in-one SEO pack. What we need to do now is click activate where we see XML sitemaps because this isn't actually enabled by default. Then in the left-hand menu, just sort of below performance over there, you'll see XML sitemap now appears. Now what we need to do is actually go and configure the particulars of the sitemap. So here what we can do is choose the file name prefix and leaving it as the default being sitemap is just fine. Next, we can choose to notify Google as well as Bing. So it's always good to turn these on so that anytime you have new content go out, search engines or at least these search engines will be notified that you've done so. Next, you can enable the sitemap indexes. Now, if you've got an enormous sitemap, we're talking sort of in excess of 50,000 links in there or greater than five megabytes in size, then this is something you want to turn on. Otherwise, you can just leave it off. There's really no harm done if the sitemap isn't really, really large. Then you can also choose to paginate the sitemap indexes. So for any time when you have an excessively large sitemap, this will actually break it down into separate files. And it's definitely best to do this if you have a massive sitemap. It'll make search engines a lot happier. Then we just choose what post types and taxonomies we want included in the sitemap. So at the moment, So at the moment, I've currently got all post types being put into this sitemap, but I probably don't need to. I might only want to put posts and pages in there. You can see here, I've also got forums, replies, and recipe available. These are three examples of post types that I have, and these are strictly based on my current WordPress installation. So these will change based on what plugins you have installed and the theme that you're currently using. Thereafter, we can see taxonomies. So at the moment, all taxonomies are going to be included in the sitemap. And for most people, that's going to be fine. You've got your categories, tags, top of tags, format, and you can see here I've got recipe categories, and that's just regarding a custom post type that I've got in this theme at the moment. By default, the date and author archive pages will not be included in the sitemap, so you can choose to enable them if you would like. Next, you can choose to create a compressed sitemap if you'd like. Now, this is turned on by default. You should probably just leave it on. It'll just create a zipped version of your sitemap for search engines to retrieve. Then you can choose to link from your virtual robots.txt file. If you don't know what this means, don't touch it. It's on by default and you should leave it that way. Finally, we just have the dynamically generate sitemap option and that should be turned on. You should leave it on because it will save you a lot of trouble and a lot of work. Now we come down to additional pages. So what we can do here is add pages that are on your website but are not managed through WordPress. So if for some reason you have a page that's not in WordPress, which is fairly unlikely, you can actually just add it through here. So you can add whatever you like and then hit add URL. Now we can choose to exclude items from the sitemap. So we can exclude certain categories, as you can see here, they've just got a big list of the current categories on the website. And we can also choose to exclude pages. And this will be as a comma separated list and you can use page IDs or slugs. So you might have contact two, three, four, five, or something like that. It, it just really depends on your website and how familiar you are, you are with WordPress. Next, we can choose the priorities. This has to do with how prioritized a particular item is in the sitemap. It's really best if you don't go and change these. They've already been configured in such a way that will have the most benefit for your website. Of course, if you have a very special website and there's something you want to do to pull off a custom SEO strategy, then you will need to come in here and make changes. The same applies for frequencies. The frequency that the sitemap is updated with certain posts and pages and archive pages, as you can see here, is going to be predefined by the plugin and it is set up with the best intentions. So it's best not to change those unless you know exactly what you're doing uh, or you've had a thorough read of the documentation. When you're done making any changes to your sitemap setup, all you need to do is click update sitemap. And there you go, you can see that the all-in-one SEO pack has updated the sitemap options. So that's all we need to cover with regards to the sitemap. If you have any questions about the sitemap or anything we've done here today, please feel free to ask in the comments below.